Hello, my name is Katie Khan, and I'm a Stanford medical student. My co-authors of this project are Nolan Martin, Dr. Talha Fariki, Dr. Fresh Salami Jazi, and Dr. Stephanie Chow. Today, I'll be discussing the complications associated with subsequent vascular access in pediatric ECMO patients. Achieving central venous access in children can be challenging. Following ECMO decannulation, the need for central venous access often persists in this critically ill population. Intensivists and surgeons must consider whether to reuse the cannulation site for subsequent central venous catheters or seek access at a remote location. This study investigates the risk of infectious complications associated with the reuse of peripheral ECMO cannulation sites for subsequent central access. We conducted a retrospective chart review for pediatric patients ages 0 to 18 years old who underwent peripheral ECMO cannulation between 2009 and 2021 at Lucille Packard's Children's Hospital. We hypothesized that there would be an increased rate of central line-associated bloodstream infections among patients who underwent contemporaneous central venous catheter placement at the time of ECMO decannulation using the same site. From 2009 to 2021, 227 patients were identified who underwent peripheral ECMO cannulation. 43% of these patients were placed on ECMO secondary to a congenital cardiac anomaly. The majority were placed on veno-arterial ECMO, and 94% had access through the right internal jugular. After ECMO decannulation, 53 patients received a central venous catheter at the same site. 25 received a central venous catheter at a different location, 63 received a peripherally inserted, inserted central catheter, and 87 had no subsequent vascular access placed within 30 days of decannulation. Among the patients with secondary access placed at the same site, there were two clapses or 1.87 clapses per 1,000 line days. Patients with PICC lines after ECMO decannulation had 0.43 clapses per 1,000 line days. In comparison, the institution's hospital-wide CLABC rate was 1.46 per 1,000 line days during the same period. The rate of CLABCs among patients with secondary access at the site of decannulation was higher than the rate among patients with PICC lines and the institutional rate. However, this did not rise to the level of statistical significance. There were no CLABCs reported among those with secondary access at a different site or those with no subsequent vascular access. There were no recorded venous thromboembolisms among any of the cohorts after ECMO decannulation. In contrast, central venous catheter placement at the time of ECMO decannulation had no significant difference in CLABSI development compared with the institutional CLABSI rates. Compared to with ECMO patients with subsequent central venous catheters placed at alternative access sites or via PIC after decannulation, patients with contemporaneous central venous catheter placed at the site of decannulation trended towards slightly higher rates of CLABSIs, although not significantly so. This was a single institution study, and the sample size and rare event outcomes limit our ability to perform a more robust analysis. The role of antibiotic therapy would be interesting to study in the context of CLABSI as an outcome. Thank you for your time, and thank you to my fellow co-authors for all of their contributions.